All right, now I'm now that I've finished playing with that, I'm going to show you um, some other uh, things. So I'm going to use a fresh piece of paper, and this time I'm going to do three different colors of uh, blue. Uh, now, every time I start a new painting, I start with a, a fresh piece of paper underneath you because what will happen with this is if I were, if I was to put a new painting on top of it or a new picture on top of it and then paint I would easily draw this yellow wax would then melt and then be drawn up onto the picture green. the green wax thank you, thank you Pam. <laughs> so we have another clean piece oh I'm going to show you how to clean the irons I have here just plain old cheap candle wax and what you do is you run that wax all through the edges of your iron bottom, the flat of the iron I have a nice thick paper towel here that's perfect for this job I'm getting that all off there so now I have a completely clean iron. The corners of the irons have to be burped. You can see there that looked very clean. And as soon as I put the cloth in the corner, you can see how much very dark wax actually come, comes out of those corners. So if you want to start with a completely fresh iron, you make sure you do those corners too. Burp those corners. Alright, so I've got three different colors of blue here. I'm just going to randomly put lots of wax on just to note the wax if it gets on your clothes can uh, ruin your clothing so I would suggest you wear clothing um, that you can destroy or at least you can um, use as a smock so because hot melted crayon does not come out of clothing. Not to my, in my experience. Alright, so there I've got some blue on the paper. Now, there's a whole uh, series of different uh, things you can do with the iron by picking up the paper. So what I did was paint the iron with the color again and just glide the color over. You can see it. there's several different colors now that are mixed in here. There's actually three different blues. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick up my paper now and I'm going to actually tap my paper against the iron and I'm going to create lines of trees or walls of coral So you have to pick the paper up off the ground to, to do that. The back of the paper will get warm, so just be careful. As anything, use caution. And until the paper, until the wax is melted, it will smudge a little bit. You can see it smudged a little bit there, but that's okay because there's no problem going back in with the iron and giving it another little... So that's going to take about two seconds to dry. So that's a wonderful thing you can do when you can pick up the paper. I'm going to show you now. I love uh, spirals and paths and things of that nature. So I'm going to start in the middle of this painting because I have already all kinds of foil foliage on the outside. And when I look in here, I see that there's some place in the middle of this painting that I want to get to. So I'd like to put a path or something to the middle of this painting because it seems brighter down there. There seems to be something uh, in here that needs to be discovered. So I'm going to use that as a starting point and uh, start a spiral. So for a spiral I'll use the last maybe quarter inch or half inch of the iron. Just the tip of the iron. About that much of the iron. I'm going to start right in the center and I'm going to leave the iron on the paper 
and very very carefully this takes lots of practice you'll want to do this a thousand times you'll have to do it a thousand times before you get a perfect spiral So that just gives you an idea of, of what you can do with a spiral in the center. What I also love to do is, so now I've got all this foliage in my little picture here, and I've got a, obviously it looks like there's something interesting going on down there. So I've painted the picture so that your eye will be drawn to this part of the painting. But now I want to make it a little more difficult to get down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the entire edge of the painting, uh, of my iron, this edge mm. right here, and I'm going to l lay the iron flat on the paper, give it a little run on the paper so you feel what that's like, and then I want you to run just the edge over the painting, and then I want you to change the direction that the painting is sitting, and I want you to start from that corner and draw the edge right through. Now look at that. To me, I look at that and I see a perfectly shaded stick laying on the ground. I'm going to turn the... Remember, every time you do a line, you need to turn the paper. So I'm, again, I'm going to bring from one edge to the other. Every time I'm turning the paper around. So just, it's nice to see this done live so you can actually get an idea of how very little time to put out a little painting like this can take, especially once you've practiced the basic skills. Now a little painting like this would make a beautiful uh, thank you card or a gift card or a thank you card. Uh, or, reds, make a Christmas card. or Christmas cards, yes. we do. I've made a lot of my own Christmas cards in the last few years. Okay, so now I've got, you can see the branches all look like they're intertwined. Um, but I want to bring these branches now a little bit more on top of uh, my spiral. Now what happens, uh, things that are further away are going to appear smaller. So the width of these branches, I want them to represent branches that are a little bit further away. So the branches that I'm going to add on now are going to be wider than this. Um, so they're going to look closer up. So I'm going to do two more layers of branches, each one getting a little bit wider than the last. And it's going to look like I'm going to be obscuring the picture, but it actually is an, an incredibly cool effect. So I'll do two things at uh, two different layers um, and just showing you that I'm going to get a little bit progressively bigger and you just practice how to do that you just practice holding a little bit more of the iron on the paper like that and I'm going to bring that right down over and you don't want your, your, I'm making these look like branches, so all of these imperfections uh, make it perfect. It, it makes it even more uh, natural looking, because we don't want the branches to look perfect, because no branches are. There's no such, uh, every branch is perfect. Just exactly the way it is. There we go. So you can see that layer was a little bit thicker. I'm going to add just a couple more, a little closer in, a tiny bit bigger. And 
one more. Now, 